So here in this video, I am going to discuss Davison and Germer experiment. Okay. So De Broglie in 1924 first predicted a wave nature of an electron and give an expression lambda is equal to h by p. So this is a wavelength. Uh, with this expression helps to calculate the wavelength of a matter wave. This was experimentally verified by Javis, Davison and Germer experiment. Uh, Davies and uh, German are the two American scientists which developed an operators. So this is a set of an operators. Uh, these operators helps to calculate uh, the wavelength of an electron. Okay, so we can easily conclude that electron also behaves as a wave nature and also particle nature. Let us see how these operators will work. Uh, see here the description of the operators. So here. Uh, uh, we have the thermal we have an electron gun so this electron gun produces thermal electrons by heating this filament the, this filament is uh, coated with the zinc oxide and this filament is heated by connecting uh, this low tension battery lt and when these electrons are ejected from this filament uh, when this uh, and uh, these electrons when start moving uh, which is collimated by using this diaphragms D1 and D2. These diaphragms helps to collimate these electrons, means it helps to move in a single direction. Uh, next, when these electrons enter into this aluminium cylinder, see this aluminium cylinder is connected to a high tension battery. So we are applying potential here. So due to this uh, applied potential, these electrons speeds will get increases and these electrons are get accelerated. So when these electrons are coming out from this uh, uh, cylinder this uh, and uh, hit this uh, target, here we are using the, our target is nickel crystal. When these electrons strike this nickel crystal, it, these electrons get scattered. Okay. So these scattered electrons are uh, detected by using a detector. So our detector is a Faraday ionization chamber. So this Faraday ionization chamber will detect, uh, will uh, uh, store these electrons and uh, but but there will be a chances of secondary electrons also these primary electrons can also possible to produce a secondary electrons secondary electrons are produced by these atoms this nickel crystal atoms so your, here our nickel crystal uh, is a single crystal uh, and this, this is also a fcc crystal so when these electrons are uh, the secondary electrons are covered by uh, this which is pre uh, prevented by using this chamber this shielding chamber by uh, by applying a uh, retarded potential okay and this detector is also a movable detector this detector is connected to a sensitive galvanometer here we can record the current okay so means uh, next so this detector is also a movable detector okay so this uh, experiment is performed by two methods one is normal incident method another one is not oblique incident method so in normal incident methods for different uh, for a different uh, a potential difference here see by varying the potential in the aluminium uh, cylinder uh, we are calculating the uh, this uh, what are the results we are what are the result we will operate we will take a graph uh, for varying different potential and in oblique incidence we are taking a result we are taking the graph or uh, uh, we are calculating the values by taking uh, different angles so by keeping the voltage constant with different angles by rotating this uh, detector we are calculating uh, the result okay so let us see the normal incident method so here uh, the norm in normal incidence method so uh, the voltage applying here in the potential e voltage applying uh, in this accelerating cylinder is maintained at uh, maintained at some constant voltages like 44 volt for 48 volt 54 volt and 60 volt for 68 volts their corresponding uh, current ionizing current we are noted by using this galvanometer okay but here the angle is fixed the galano this here the galvanometer and the detector is fixed at some angle so we are taking uh, for 50 degree we are measuring for 50 degree and by keeping this uh, constant angle at uh, constant uh, particular potential we are measuring this uh, ionization current see at 44 volt we will get like this the hump will like this uh, means which are these are ionizing current we are graphing uh, graph is drawn between the ionizing current which is indicated by the galvanometer and also with ref uh, the call attitude means with respect to angles 
see for 44 volt uh, this is our ionization current and the hump will comes like this and for 48 volt we will uh, we'll get like this and for 54 volt at a 50 degree angle so hump is maximum see it almost shall behaves as a wave nature like this okay so next again at 60 degree 60 volt so we will get like this and at 68 volt we will get like this so we are graphing ionization current versus the voltage uh, this uh, angle see uh, next uh, let us see the theory theoretical calculation of this uh, wavelength uh, lambda okay by using these uh, voltages and uh, so here i am going to take uh, this 50 degree and 54 volt uh, to calculate our wavelength lambda okay so this is normal incidence method this experiment is performed by in this normal incident method like this so here the angle is fixed by constant uh, potential at different constant potentials we are recording the ionization, ionization current uh, using this galvanometer and the detector here is fixed okay so let us see the uh, wavelength uh, what are the wavelength we will get so if the electron behaves as a wave nature we have a formula by uh, uh, using the Bragg's law we know that 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda where n is an order uh, next and uh, d is a interplanar spacing distance okay and uh, here our order we are taking for a first order so n is equal to 1 so then you will get 2d sin theta is equal to lambda and d so for nickel crystal d is 2.15 2.15 armstrong okay if you substitute here then we will get lambda is equal to 2 into 2.15 into sin 50 degree so in the last in the previous graph i have already shown that the, we are taking for a 50 degree uh, for 50 degree we are calculated different uh, potentials so lambda is equal to uh, after calculating this 2 into 2.15 into for sine 50 degree 0 0.7 something we will get so after substituting this value we will get lambda is equal to uh, 1.65 armstrong 1.65 armstrong okay next uh, let us see uh, so this was uh, this i am calculated for the graph uh, like this so in the graph we will get a uh, high amp at 50 degree and at 54 volt right so for this uh, graph i am going to calculate the wavelength next so uh, if we consider electron is a charged particle if we consider electron is a charged particle the energy of that electron is v e so which is equal to half m v square where v is the velocity of an electron so which is equal so when we can write v square is equal to 2 into v e divided by m next so v is, v is equal to root of 2 v m divided by m okay so sorry v e energy of this electron charged electron but according to deep broadly we know that according to de Broglie lambda is equal to h by p we are going to verify this one only right so lambda is equal to h by p therefore h, h divided by m into v mass into velocity so therefore lambda is equal to h divided by mass into velocity means root 2 v e divided by m if m come into this root so it becomes h divided by root of 2 m square v e divided by m and m square and m gets cancelled therefore lambda is equal to h divided by root of 2 m v e so if we substitute the constant values h is 6.626 into so here I am going to calculate. So lambda is equal to h means 6.626 into 10 to the power of minus 34 divided by root of 
2 into m e is mass of the electron 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kg into this applied potential is 54 we are calculating per 54 volt right so 54 so after substituting these values we will get lambda is equal to 1.66 Armstrong see uh, these are verified so lambda in the if you consider electron as a wave nature we will get lambda is equal to 1.65 if you consider electron as a particle, we will get lambda is equal to 6.66 Armstrong. Okay. So, experimentally, which is verified, which is proved. So, particle wavelength electrons has both wave nature and as well as particle nature. Okay. So, here lambda we will get by considering electron is a wave. Here lambda we will get by considering electron is a particle. So, both the wavelength are almost same. So, experimentally, which is verified, electron also behaves as a wave nature. So, this was uh, verified by normal incident method. So, in, let us see in oblique incidence method. So, we will get. So, here in this oblique, uh, oblique incidence method, so by keeping the accelerating voltage constant, we are varying this, uh, in, this uh, galvanometer reading. Okay. So, that means we are varying the angle of incidence and the angle of scattering. So, this detector is moving at various uh, at different angles we are measuring the uh, galvanometer current. Okay. This ionization current we are recording at different angles. So, this is rotating right this detector is rotating. So, at different different angles we are recording uh, 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 we are recording and get the graph C. By taking the galvanometer detection and the glancing angles, we will get the humps like this. So, we will get like this and uh, to calculate for theoretical calculation, I am taking uh, at 31 degree and 32 at uh, and another one is at 62 degree. Let us see what are the, what's the wavelength we will get by for these angles. So, here keeping the voltage. So, here uh, uh, I am taking these graphs for keeping the voltage at 60 volt. So, here my voltage is V is equal to 60 volt. Okay. So, let us we have see uh, we know that if electron behaves as a wave nature to calculate that wavelength we are using Bragg's law. So, according to Bragg's law 2d sin theta 1 is equal to n lambda and 2d sin theta 2 is equal to n plus 1 lambda. Okay. So, our theta 1 is 31 degree and our theta 2 is 62 degree. So, then we will get see 2d sin theta 2 minus theta 1 is equal to n plus 1 minus n into lambda. So, n and n gets cancelled remaining is 2 d sin theta 2 minus sin theta 1. So, sorry here we will get 2 d sin theta 2 minus sin theta 1. Okay, is equal to lambda. So, then lambda is equal to 2 d sin theta 2 means 62 degree minus theta 1 means sin 31 degree. So, is equal to lambda. So, next lambda is sorry. Okay, already here written. So, lambda is equal to 2 into our d is 2 point something. Uh, 2.15 Armstrong into means 10 to the power of minus 10 into sin. So, after calculating the sin 62 minus sin 31, uh, so after substituting those values, we will get lambda is equal to 1.5 Armstrong. So, after substituting the sin uh, 62 minus sin 31 degree, we will get lambda is equal to 1.51 Armstrong. So, 1.58 Armstrong. Okay. So, let us see yes. after substituting sin 62. So, first substitute sin 62 value minus after substitute sin 31 value and subtract and multiply those values here and we will get lambda is equal to 1.58 Armstrong. Next, so this is this is over okay. by considering wave is a uh, electron is a wave nature. Now, let us see if we consider wave is a particle. So, we have a formula that is 
h by p and the lambda is equal to h divided by root of 2m v e okay so if a, if a electron is a uh, charged particle then energy is represented into v e is equal to h divided by root of 2 mass of the particle okay so lambda is equal to h means 6.626 into 10 to the power of minus 34 divided by root of 2 into mass of the particle 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31 into uh, this where a voltage here apply 60 volt into you have to multiply the charge 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulomb so in the previous while calculating normal incidence i forgot to write this 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 so please take that 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 while calculating a particle nature in normal incidence so there i forgot to write this so next after calculating this we will get lambda is equal to uh, 1.55 armstrong 1.55 armstrong see here we will we go we get 1.58 armstrong and here we will get 1.55 armstrong so uh, see uh, it is experimentally uh, verified that uh, these are approximately equal right so 1.58 into 10 to the power of minus 10 meter here 1.55 into 10 to the power of minus 10 meter so approximately equal so we can easily conclude that these electrons has both wave nature and as well as particle nature so this Deviger and Zermer experiment conclude that particle like electrons also behaves as wave nature and as well as particle nature it has dual nature okay see by taking oblique incidence method that means by uh, keeping uh, constant accelerating voltage you are just varying the di direct uh, these angles this detector angles angle of incidence uh, and the scattering angle or varying next uh, in the normal incidence method by keeping the angle or de detector fixed you are just varying the accelerating uh, uh, potential and their corresponding galvanometer the ionization current is noted here okay so the final conclusion from, from this experiment is it successfully explain uh, it successfully shows the dual nature of electrons particle like electrons wave nature and as well as particle nature